Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Luth. I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California, and I run a video production company called Luth Productions. So I've got asked recently a few times to do a breakdown on how I color grade my videos to look the way that they do. So today I wanted to share some of my workflow and just kind of show you guys how you can achieve color grading that looks like this. I've always been really fascinated by the cinematic look and what colors and tones make an image look and feel uh, cinematic and filmic. Now there's obviously a lot more elements that go into making a cinematic image and you can actually check out my video on that that I made here, but today we're going to be looking at one that's more specific, which is color grading. So I've developed a pretty simple workflow for myself to achieve great colors and cinematic tones right away using LUTs. And these are actually LUTs I've created myself that if you'd like, you can actually purchase them via the link below. Um, I put out three different looks so far, Twilight, Cosmic, and the latest Cobalt. Um, each has a different cinematic feel to it, but these are honestly the LUTs that I've used exclusively on almost every project I do if I'm shooting on Black Magic, and even if I'm not. So now the Cobalt LUT does have a universal option, which means it will work with any camera designed uh, with the workflow of correcting your footage from log and then applying as a finishing LUT. Uh, I have yet to come out with universal LUTs for all of them yet, but there will be some in the future, so stay tuned. And the Blackmagic LUTs can be used as a finishing LUT if you kind of tone them down a little bit. So let's jump into this. Because I've created my own LUTs that I use a lot, my workflow can often be as simple as a conversion from Log to Rec. 709 and then just applying my finishing LUT or literally just throwing on my Blackmagic LUTs. But I'm gonna be walking you guys through a bit of a more detailed process of taking some Blackmagic footage, converting it to Rec. 709 and then creating some of those cinematic tones to give you that look and feel for your image. Okay, so let's jump into this. So what I have up on the screen here right now is a, um, a project that I shot with my wife, actually. It's like a dance video that we were doing. She's not dancing in this, but it's kind of cool. Um, and this is actually the Twilight that I have on right now, just to show you guys. But we're gonna remove that and take that off for right now. So the first thing you wanna do when looking at any image um, that's coming to you in log, or even if it's not, is your color correction. So color correction is the first and most important step in a color grade, and we wanna make sure our colors look natural and correct to like how we would see them with our eyes in real life. So I'm gonna take this footage here and just start by dropping a Rec. 709 conversion LUT onto the footage. You can actually get this for free via the link below if you're interested. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go up to here and grab my Blackmagic uh, Gen 5 to Rec. 709. We're gonna add that on there and that's gonna convert this uh, from log to Rec. 709. So already it actually looks really good because the lighting's great, but there's a lot more we can do to get this image to the next level. So the first thing we're gonna walk through is our temperature. So let's start by adjusting that. I'm gonna add a new serial node here for temperature because this will be a Rec. 709 LUT. And I'm gonna go, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna watch these scopes. We're pretty close already, but you kinda wanna watch and balance these out because it's a little warm right now and I'm gonna cool it down just a hair till that's matching about right there. See how that's getting close. And then I'm gonna bring my tint up just a little bit into the purple. And now we've got a much closer looking um, uh, RGB parade that we see here. So that's kind of what we're doing for our temperature. I don't think I would adjust it too much more than that. So the next thing we wanna do is kind of a touch a little bit of our contrast. And you can go up here and just grab your contrast if you'd like. But what I like to do actually is grab my gamma and my gain. And I'm gonna bring my gamma down just a little bit because I wanna add a little bit more. Um, just kind of crush those blacks a bit. Bring the gain up just a little bit. All right, this is already looking really good. So you can see right now, that was before, that was after. We've got it looking a little bit more correct. It looks pretty good already out of camera, um, but that just helped it look a little bit more, a little bit more natural. So the other thing we can do too, if we don't feel like adjusting the um, temperature based on scopes, I do suggest that, but you can go over to here and you can actually just find a white point on your image. So maybe about like that. There we go. Okay, perfect. So that's something that should be pure white in there. Now we have a much more natural feeling image. Okay. So now that we've gone through and we've adjusted our image to look correct, um, the next thing we're gonna do is adjust saturation. So I'm gonna create another serial node here. And there's two ways we can do this. The first is really simple. And what most people just do is they go down to like the saturation tab. And they go, boom, saturation, awesome, looks good. 
And now this is a fine way to do it. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna show you guys another way to do it that's a little bit more complicated, but this is a kind of what I've found gives a much nicer, more natural feeling saturation to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new parallel node. And right here, we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to our color space and we're gonna change it to HSV, which is, uh, I forget what the H stands for, but uh, I think it's hue, saturation, and value. Um, so we're gonna click that. And then we're gonna go down to our channels and we're gonna select channel, de or deselect channel one and then deselect channel two, because if we've corrected this to, or changed this to the color space HSL, or sorry, HSV, then our S channel is our saturation. And that's the one that we wanna uh, select. So now what we're gonna do is actually go down to our gain and we're gonna boost this up slowly. And you can see, I'm gonna enhance it quite a bit. You can see the saturation increase. Obviously that's too much. Uh, so we'll reset that, but I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit. And I don't know if you guys can see before and after. So there's with the normal saturation and that's with the other saturation. So as you can see, it's not too much of a difference, but it does make it look a little bit more natural. Like when we increase this, we don't see it increasing like the, the entire image. It's just grabbing just the saturation tone, or however you wanna call it, and only increasing that, which makes it feel more natural to us. So I'm gonna dial that back just a little bit because I don't want it too much. We'll sit at like 1.19. All right, let's get rid of this guy. Oh, and the other thing I'll say too is it's always a good idea to uh, label your nodes. Currently, I have not been doing that. Um, sometimes I just go through this really fast and just forget, um, but make sure to do that so you can keep track of what you're, uh, what you're doing and what you've done to your image. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adjusting my skin tone. So I'm gonna create another uh, serial node and then a layer node. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to qualify out my skin tones and then create the layer above to do my adjustments for the cinematic kind of teal and orange look or however I wanna do because I don't want that affecting the skin tones that I have right now because they look really good and natural and I don't wanna change that. I'm gonna go down to my bottom node here, and I'm gonna go to my qualifier, and I'm gonna go right here, and I'm just gonna move in, and I'm gonna select her skin tones. Now we're gonna hit S, uh, Shift H to see which parts they are, and we're gonna add just a little bit more. Okay, all right, that's maybe getting close. We see a little bit of her hair, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our um, clean black, Okay, that's taking it out of her hair. Clean white is bringing it more into her skin. And change our, we don't wanna adjust that too much. And we're gonna change our blur radius and our in and out ratio. So we can see like that's too much. And then dial that back just a little bit. Okay, awesome. That's not too bad. If I was spending more time on this, I would probably try and make that a little bit better, but this is pretty good for what we're doing right now. So now what I'm gonna do is go up to my top layer and I'm actually gonna apply one of my LUTs because I'm gonna use this as a finishing LUT. And where is my Luke production slots? And okay, so here's universal. Obviously that looks way too much right now. Um, another one we could do is our cosmic or our twilight or our cobalt. So let's go with our cosmic. You can see right now that's obviously way too too strong. But um, the nice thing is, is you can see the skin tones are not affected. They've stayed the same. Only the image is affected. But this is obviously way too strong for what we're doing. So we're gonna go over to our key and we're gonna take our key output way down, all the way to the all the way to zero. And then I'm actually just gonna slowly dial this in like that. Okay, and that might be a little bit too much right there. And what I'm actually not liking about this image is it feels too saturated to me. So I'm gonna go back up to my saturation and I'm gonna bring that down. About right there, okay, awesome. And you know what it's also feeling like? A little bit too warm. So 
I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna cool this down just a little bit. Okay, awesome. The other thing that I'm seeing is our contrast from the rest of our image to our skin tones, it doesn't feel consistent. So I'm gonna go over to my skin tones and all I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna increase the contrast just a hair and that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I honestly feel like we don't wanna to see too much of this. So I'm gonna go like that, see how it adds quite a bit of a look to it. And I'm gonna dial it back even more. That's feeling pretty good to me. Let's see full screen, not bad. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play around with our teal and orange look just a little bit here. So I'm gonna go to my curves and go to my hue versus saturation. We're gonna take this and we're gonna find some of our blues. Awesome. And I'm gonna make those just a little bit teal, not doing too much. Maybe let's try her shirt. All right, you can see it's very, very slight. It hardly does anything. Um, I'm also going to go into our curves here, go to my red curve, and I'm just gonna drop that just a hair. Get a see how see how it's adding some more blue to it, and maybe even the highlights a little bit. Okay, into our blue, add a little bit of we can add a little bit of purple into the uh, shadows and then drop our highlights. See how this is almost like a little bit too blue. I'm gonna actually make our highlights a little bit creamier. So that's looking pretty nice. Now, the one thing that you'll notice here that I don't like is often when you start messing with this stuff, you'll notice that your blacks will sometimes look a little less black. This isn't too bad, but a little less black and a little bit too purple. Like, let's take a look at this, for example. If I was to go like that, See what I mean? Not quite what I want. Let's create a new serial node and we're gonna start correcting the blacks. So I'm gonna go to my saturation, my luminance versus saturation. I'm gonna go about right there and I'm just gonna drop it down. And you'll see it's hardly noticeable, but if I zoom in here, and see, just, it's so slight on this image. You can hardly tell, but all I'm doing is kind of removing the saturation out of our blacks. All right, so if I was doing this on a, another clip that maybe was a little bit more shadowy, you'd probably notice it more. But this is just something that really helps um, all right, so I'm feeling pretty good about the way this is looking so far. Let's take a look at what it looked like before with just our Rec 709. Oh my gosh. All right, so that's that was the Rec 709 conversion. That's what we're looking like now. It's looking way better. Even if I were to go from log to now, this is looking amazing. And we can even scrub through the clip and take a look at some of these other shots. I'm a big fan of how this is looking right now. The last couple things that I wanted to add to this is our film grain and halation. So we're gonna start with film grain first, and it's just as simple as creating a new serial node, going up to our effects, search grain, take our film grain and drop it on there. And now we need to choose what kind of preset we want. So I'm gonna go with a 35 millimeter and we'll zoom in a little bit on this and let's play around with some of our texture. You can see if I move that, adjust it a little bit, our grain size. Okay, you see that? And then it's actually not too bad. So I play it through. Now I'm sure YouTube probably does not show the compression or with its compression does not show the grain very well, but you can actually see over here. Okay, look super closely, like right here. I'm gonna go off and on. See how it makes just a slight difference. You don't want it too heavy. All right, so now we got our film grain in. Let's move on to our halation. Create another serial node. I'm getting a little bit of 
we're not in a room here. Uh, and then I'm gonna go up to here and we're just gonna search elation and drag and drop this onto there. All right, so right now I went and did something. We don't like that. It's not what we want. We're gonna click view isolated regions and then we're gonna select our threshold and we're just gonna get it so it's hitting like what the, sh the highlights would be. So kind of like around right there. Halation is really cool because it adds a somewhat of a little like reddish glow around all the points that would be kind of like clipping on film and the highlights and it makes it look just like how actual film would look. Um, so we're going to punch in just a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we've selected that and let's go to our gamma. See if I move that, you see that? really strong that's like way too much dial that back in our strength so let's maybe bring that down to around there one uh 0.26 and then our gamma that's looking pretty good already we want it a little bit subtle i don't like going super crazy with it but you can see it's just kind of Kind of hitting around some of these some of these highlighted points here. Look at that. Love it. So that's how you grade things to look cinematic. That's how I do it. Um, let's take a quick look here at what it looked like before. That was obviously log, and then that was our Rec 709 conversion. And now we're gonna go to our last look. There we go. Looks awesome. So there you have it. It looks pretty solid to me. That's my workflow for color grading. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it. However, if you're like me and time is important to you, sometimes you just need to achieve that look a little bit quicker. So make sure to go check out the LUTs I have available by clicking the link in the description because they can be a real time saver. And honestly, I'm a big fan of how they look. Thanks again for watching everyone. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And I will see you guys on the next one.